Well hello and welcome to my latest video. Uh, about a week ago I did a uh, video about a bike fit, uh, how to measure your bike and how to ensure that it fits uh, properly. But what I didn't really cover uh, was the fact that although that, that uh, covers most uh, types of bicycle from uh, uh, chopper up to mountain bike doesn't really address the specific needs of a gravel bike and those of you who might want to be interested in riding a gravel bike and the fit for a gravel bike is very different and it requires a very different process and a very different set of tools so I thought what I'd cover today is how to ensure that your new gravel bike uh, fits you or the gravel bike that you're planning to buy uh, will fit you properly. So let me just back out of the picture a little bit and allow the camera to focus on what we have here which is a gravel bike and this is called a, uh, a Fairlight Seacan gravel bike and if you're in the market for a gravel bike it's a very good bike to get. Um, it's a, a gravel bike. Uh, this happens to be made of steel and steel gravel bikes can be very, very comfortable so long as you ensure that they fit correctly. So uh, let's go through that particular process. First thing you have to ensure is that your shoes and here is my shoes. You have to ensure that your shoes fit you properly. Uh, that's best done by first of all measuring your foot and I've got the the tape measure here so I measure my foot like that then I measure my shoe and I make sure that my shoe fits my foot correctly. The next thing you need to ensure is that the distance that your wheels are going to sink into the mud does not exceed uh, a foot or as we say in Europe at 15 centimeters. So let's just focus down a little bit and I think now if I get out of the way, see I'm pointing at a wheel here and I'm going to measure a foot on my trusty tape measure and that's a foot there and in fact it's 30 centimeters. Sorry my ability to uh, uh, compare centimeters to feet is not very good. So that is a foot. Now if your bike goes into the mud for more than a foot it's not going to fit properly. So measure your wheels from the center of the wheel up to the top of your wheel or assuming your wheels are round and the center of the wheel is in the middle which it is in most round items you can measure from the center of the wheel down to the ground and so long as that distance is not greater than a foot then your gravel bike will be able to go through the mud effectively and there it will work. The next thing you need to measure is whether the width of the tires that you're using is going to be sufficient to get across the different types of gravel that you might have in your locality. Now my particular tires are uh, uh, 40, 45 millimeters or 4.5 centimeters or one and three quarters inches. All right. Now when you find the kind of gravel that you want to ride on and some of my correspondents have commented on the the high quality of the gravel in uh, South Australia, uh, in British Columbia, uh, in Venezuela, uh, in Scotland. Uh, some people seem to think that I concentrate on the southeast of England. That is not true. I am aware that there are other places in the world. So you need to go and find your local gravel trail. You need to take your tape measure with you and you need to measure the width of the normal gravel that you find there. And so long as that width is less than the width of your tires, then you'll be able to ride successfully over the gravel and you won't have any problems. The next thing you need to know is the width of the average ruts 
that you find either on a, a bridal way uh, here in, in southern England or ruts that you just find on a farm track uh, because the farm vehicles and the tractors and so forth have gone along them and they've they've made these ruts in the ground you know what the rut is it's like a it's like a, a, a concave or is it convex uh, depression in the ground it can be quite deep again when you're riding along it's very helpful if you take your tape measure with you and then when you come to a rut uh, measure the width of the rut but also the depth of the rut that's very essential because if your gravel bike uh, doesn't fit either into the rut uh, width wise or depth wise then you're going to struggle riding through those ruts you don't want that the next thing you need to check is if you buy a gravel bike, it's almost certainly because you want to go bike packing. And bike packing is a process where you go out, uh, you find a field, preferably muddy, um, preferably with dew and perhaps animal droppings scattered across it. And then what you get is uh, what's called a bivy bag. And a bivy bag is essentially like a large carrier bag uh, that you spread out over the, uh, the, the animal droppings. Uh, you climb into the bivy bag and then gradually during the night you freeze to death. So you wake up in the morning uh, with hypothermia. Uh, so long as you've got uh, one of those little gas stoves, uh, you'll be able to heat yourself some water. And then if you dip your feet, uh, not wearing shoes, dip your feet into the water, preferably warm water, then you'll be able to thaw out gradually. And then when the hypothermia is gone and you're in a position to uh, fold up your bivy bag and throw it away, you'll be able to get back onto your bike and then get home for a nice warm bath. But in doing so, you'll need somewhere to store your bivy bag and therefore you need to measure the distance between your handlebars because that's where you're going to put your your front bar bag and in the case of this Fairlight Seacan it's um, uh, 15, 15 inches or 38 centimeters so as long as you've measured that distance and you buy a bar bag that fits in there then you'll be able to put that bivy bag in it until you find a, a suitable bin that you can use to chuck away your, your bivy bag. The other thing that you're going to need is when you're out doing your bike packing um, and before you try and get some sleep in your bivy bag uh, you're, no, you're going to need to dig a hole uh, so you can deposit uh, your your feces there and I'm sorry in a, in a family video we have to talk about feces but it's essential that you leave no trace so you dig your hole in the ground but you mustn't you mustn't absolutely mustn't you mustn't deposit your feces in the ground you must take a a special bag you, you can buy them from uh wiggle or chain reaction or or your local bike shop and it's called a feces bag it's a bit like a a, a dog poo bag but it's something that enables you to leave no trace because you put your feces and your toilet paper and so forth in that and then you store it in a um a frame bag and it's called a frame bag because it fits in your frame so here i'm measuring my frame and this is uh 50 centimeters uh by about um uh, 30 centimeters you can you can do the maths you can translate it into uh, feet and inches i haven't got time to do all of the work for you and so long as you've got enough space there then you can put a frame bag in there and in your frame bag uh, you can put your your little bags of feces if you're if you're away for a week uh, then you're going to need to make sure you've got a big enough frame bag uh, because you may have quite a lot of waste that you've got to take home with you and when you take it home you can dispose of it along with the rest of your your equipment and your bivy bag and your your down sleeping bag so that deals with the the bar bag it deals with the frame bag it deals with the depth of the tires uh, the saddle here you need to make sure that it's a gravel specific saddle and riding across gravel uh, is very uncomfortable there are lots of sharp stones it bounces around a lot and it's quite hard or well, quite unpleasant uh, on your bottom so you need to make sure uh, with your 
with your tape measure that you measure the width of your saddle. As long as your saddle is more than six inches in depth and ideally uh, has got memory foam, you know that stuff they make mattresses and pillows out of, uh, if you don't have memory foam you can use ducks but you're going to have to get a lot of ducks uh, in order to fit them into that saddle. Uh, it, it helps if you remove the beak and the claws because they can be quite sharp but put those ducks in and then you've got a duck down the saddle and that is not only very comfortable but if you come across a low bridge or you have to get under a fallen tree branch or something you'll be able to duck down and get under that along with your uh, equipment and your various bar bags and, and so on and so forth. So the process for doing a gravel bike fit uh, is very different from a normal bike fit. If you're going to a bike shop and you say I want to buy a gravel bike make sure you've got your tape measure with you. It doesn't have to be a park tool tape measure. Uh, it can be any sort of tape measure but it's very useful if the tape measure that you use has got marked on it uh, inches and the inch marks are an inch wide. You don't want them to be an inch and a half wide or two inches wide because that can be confusing. And also that the centimetre scale uh, that is on there is the European centimetre scale. You don't want to use uh, some of the other centimetre scales that they use in other countries because that can be confusing and it can mean you end up with a gravel bike that doesn't fit you properly. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you find the information useful. There are other videos on YouTube that I've noticed that have advice uh, for doing a gravel bike fit. I've looked at some of those and some of the, the some of the suggestions and the information they make I think are, are of doubtful probity if I'm honest. So uh, it's best not to pay attention to those. Just pay attention to my video. If you need to take your, your iPad or your iPhone and your desktop computer with you when you go to the bike shop to measure up the bike so you make sure you've got all this information at your finger pit, uh, fingertips even, then that is probably very useful. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and see you next time.